Hey, Forrest here. Nothing like getting paid. And with ICCU's mobile app, I can deposit checks or accept Zelle payments so the money hits my account fast. I just wish there was an app for mowing the rest of these lawns. Right now, Lithia Ford of Boise is buying used vehicles. How much you want for the SUV? Uh, I don't know. Well, Lithia Ford will give you more than that. How much more? More than you think. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking you might get even more than that. See how much more you can get at Lithia Ford of Boise. When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. Ropaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coating solution. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. It's Mondays with Mallory with KTIK 95.3 FM, The Ticket's John Mallory. Listen to Idaho Sports Talk with Prater in the Ballgame weekdays from 3 to 6 on 95.3 FM, The Ticket, and online at KTIK.com. Now, here's Johnny Ballgame and B.J. Reigns with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, how we doing, Boise State fans? Happy Monday to you. Monday morning, Mondays with Mallory. We're excited to kick off a new week with you here at uh, BroncoNationNews.com, Bronco Nation News YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook pages, all that good stuff. And we're also on the uh, KTIK channels uh, today as well, Johnny, uh, YouTube and Twitter. I think I need to work with JP to get the Facebook page links back up. But, uh, Johnny, what's up, man? Happy Monday to you. Yeah, happy Monday to you, too. The bowl season officially uh, upon us. Uh, You know, if you're on I-84 today, or you will be, it's a little slower. I just got in, and uh, luckily, no accidents on the way. But here we are. Tis the season, BJ. Lots to talk about. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, how about we've already had uh, one coach, the team Boise State's playing in a bowl game, get fired last night. And then I just saw that uh, Satterfield, the Louisville coach, is going to Cincinnati and they're playing in the bowl game in two weeks. Uh, the team he just left to go to playing his old school. Uh, some already some crazy stuff going on. And we saw Deion Sanders going to Colorado. Uh, I reported uh, last night that uh, Brady, per, me, Brady, Kelly Papinga is uh, leaving to go to BYU, which uh, shouldn't be a big surprise. He was the edge coach and the uh, co-special teams coordinator, Johnny, but he played at BYU. He coached at BYU, kind of was here for one year because he needed a job when the Virginia staff got uh, let go last year when uh, of the, this kind of surprising retirement of Mendenhall. Um, or when he stepped down. So uh, that site was that story's up for subscribers on the site. So, so we'll see if there's any official announcement today from BYU. But Broncos already looking for an offensive coordinator. Uh, we're not sure when that search will heat up. And now looking for a uh, edge slash co-special teams coordinator. Maybe they move around the roles. I don't know if you saw it or not, Johnny, but uh, Jabril Frazier, who is the uh, GA, defensive GA, former player that helps out with the edge position. He was actually seen in a picture uh, that one of the recruits posted last night that he was out with Kane Ione on the recruiting trail. Uh, and that basically confirms that if your GA is out recruiting, that uh, basically confirms that Popovich – I keep calling him Popovich. We did, did they have a coach here named Popovich before? I think they did. They had uh, Jeff Popovich. Now they have Kelly Papinga. But it's Kelly Papinga who was here one year – and he is now leaving to go to BYU, according to my sources. We'll see when that's announced. But uh, at least two coaches, I guess, that Boise State's going to have to replace. And there's a lot of other coaching news going on elsewhere, I guess. No staff stays the same. You know that, right? Very rare in that industry where you keep every single staff member. And this is just like that free-for-all, that whirlwind. All these people with resumes at the airport waiting for coaches to get off right at the hotel lobby. As you probably know, coaches hanging around. I need a job here and there. I mean, all these staffs getting fired and, you know, people like sports radio, we only talk about the head coach, but every time a head coach gets fired, there's 10 or so players, or I'm sorry, 10 or so assistant coaches. All of a sudden they're scrambling as well. And it's just this trickle down domino effect. And it does though, it waters down the bowl season tremendously i try to still get excited maybe it's that old school college football fan in me where bowl games were a big deal and it was fun watching all the but now it's you look at every single bowl game and it feels like there's either if if there's interest level in a bowl game 
a, a player or two is sitting to, to, to not to jeopardize their draft status. Um, a coach or two is off the staff. Several assistants have left. Their buddies get jobs other places. They want to go coach with them. And then, like in the weird case of the Cincinnati situation, Satterfield, I mean, are you kidding me? Is that the, the two teams in the bowl game, and that's just how it worked out there, but that happens. And uh, it's, the bowl season's kind of a buzzkill, but uh, I'm not going there today. I'm excited about it. Yeah. But uh, we'll start seeing you know more and more players not going to play in it and whatnot. Uh, Nate did say, I like Papinga, but special teams really let us down in each of the losses this year. Uh, we look back at the championship game, Johnny. Uh, the news is out by now. Obviously, Boise State going to the Frisco Bowl. Uh, it's next Saturday. Uh, there were a couple things in play here. I think they wanted to be done before Christmas, if possible. Yeah. Um, they, they like playing in Texas. You know, they have 12 players on the roster from Texas, most of which are from that Dallas area. So now you're talking about Taylor Green getting a chance to finish his first season like 30 minutes from his house or whatever. I mean, it's uh, it, it's pretty cool that uh, for Green and Genty and McAllister Love and it. a lot of these guys from there, uh, how it worked out. Now, I know a lot of fans would have preferred a better opponent than a 7-6 and six North Texas. Well, you know what? Win your, win your championship game then. I mean, that's kind of what you're – you don't get everything you want when you lose the title game at home. It's the way it worked out. You see that Utah State's playing Memphis. Maybe people are saying that's a better opponent, but that's also on the 27th where guys would have to spend their Christmas and uh, holidays uh, in a hotel room with the team practicing for the game. So there's a give and take with what you get. Um, but once they lost that, you know, it was all set up. And, and BJ with recruiting and early signing period. The, 20, the 21st is signing I love day. the fact that they get done on the 17th. They can say see ya to the players, go home, spend yep. a couple of weeks with your friends and family over the holidays. And yep. the coaches, hey, we get to kind of tighten things up in the building and just – focus on early signing period I, I i get the opponent but this was a great thing for boise state as yeah. far as what they did have you're right they weren't in much control after losing that game so this checks a lot of boxes for coach avalos playing in the frisco bowl and Definitely. they get a chance to get to 10 wins i mean regardless of who you play you don't look back years from now on how many 10 win seasons they had and go oh yeah but they played north texas to get that 10th no. win i mean you you get a chance to get 10 wins which after seven and five last year uh it'd be a, a big uh i think step forward for year two is it where people want to be no is two Mountain West championships in the last eight years uh, where this program wants to be? Uh, no, but uh, coming off of last year, starting two and two this year, if you can get to 10 wins, win the bowl game, send the seniors off and kind of regroup and try to make some improvements with this new look offense and some coaching changes for next year, given the situation, I think it's about as good as you could have done. I mean, if yep. you would have missed Christmas and then lost to Oklahoma State in the bowl game and gone, uh, you know, nine and five or whatever, it would have been a much different season than, than potentially going 10 and four. So it is what it is. Um, you know, as Perry says, kind of got what we earned. Um, and they do play, uh, they do play Memphis uh, next season, by the way, already. So that would have probably eliminated part of that, but I think it just makes sense. You go to Texas, mm -hmm. you play it, you're done. Um, and, and you go from there. Wyoming's going to the barstool bowl. I never thought that was probably going to be an option. Uh, it is interesting though, that North Texas fires their coach, Seth Luttrell. Uh, he had been there eight years, I believe. Did some good things, but they went 0-5 in bowl games while he was there. They do name an interim coach uh, for the bowl game, and then they'll be looking for a, for a new coach there in North Texas. Uh, but so that adds a little, a little wrinkle to it. But that'll be next Saturday. Uh, they'll focus on school this week. Coaches are out recruiting all week, like I said. I think they'll uh, get a couple of days off, and then they'll practice like Thursday, Friday, Saturday or something, and then they'll basically go right into game week. This is just basically like a bye week, and then you play next week, which is nice also. Again, you which is what they wanted. Yeah, play on that opening bowl weekend. Yep, and you mentioned signing days the 21st, the following uh, Wednesday, I believe it is. So, yeah, they'll get that out of the way. The uh, Players will get to go home. The only downside is that first bowl game day. That, that does coincide with finals week, so they'll have to mm -hmm. figure that out, take some tests on the road maybe. That'll be a little bit of a hiccup, but they've always played in the Vegas Bowl that same day. They're used to dealing with this. So, um, yeah, it's not the L.A. Bowl versus Washington State. It's not an NFL Rams stadium. Um, it's a little 20,000. It's about 20,000. It's Toyota Stadium. It's where FC Dallas and the MLS plays. They play the FCS championship game there. Um, so it's, uh, it's a, a nice stadium, just a little bit smaller stadium, but it's fairly new, I believe. And uh, it'll be a good opportunity. Like I said, you get down to Texas, get that play down there. So I think that uh, will be good. Uh, for Boise State. I do want to talk about the championship game, Johnny, and kind of what went wrong there. I want to talk some basketball as well. Um, the, the hoops are, hoops team is rolling right now. Um, sounds like there is going to be a little bit of a media availability today after practice as they get set for the game tomorrow uh, against EOU. 
Uh, I'm excited. The first time in 10 years, uh, I'll have a work trip to St. Louis, uh, see my family and get to see Boise State, St. Louis on Saturday. That'll be a, a fun one. The Billikens are rolling right now. But I do want to update folks on the contest, Johnny. We announced this about a week ago yeah. when, you, when you were on the air um, that we were giving away this trip for two. Uh, if you renewed your subscription to Bronco Nation News, 70 bucks, you just had to renew it for another year or if you sign up for a new subscription during the month of December this ends on December 31st so if you're just listening for the first time don't know anything about this we'd love to have you jump in all you do is pay for a one year subscription for 70 bucks online bronconationnews.com if you did that Johnny you would have got the email about 15 minutes before anybody else found out about uh, Kelly Papinga leaving we give you the breaking news first via email uh, we have a lot of other exclusive stories we do the BNN after dark show so there's a lot of exclusive content and it's 70 bucks for a full year. It's a one-time fee. And if you make it before December 31st, you're in for the grand prize, a trip for two on a private jet uh, with uh, Matt Bauscher and company. And you get to go down to the basketball game in Las Vegas. You get a night stay in Vegas at a hotel. It's going to be an awesome trip. There's some other weekly prizes, though, Johnny. This week we're giving away this pretty cool zero-gravity chair uh, that would look pretty nice in your uh, man cave out there in the garage, Johnny, for folks who want to <laughs> hang out and watch football. Uh, yeah. That's the prize this Friday. We were going to give it away at the James, but we end up doing the pregame show in the stadium, so I saved it for Friday. Brand new, awesome, zero-gravity Bud Light Seltzer chair. Anyone that's already renewed their subscription or anyone that has signed up for a one-year subscription will be entered once again to win this zero-gravity chair on Friday uh, with Jay Tust. We'll draw the name. But if you uh, aren't in yet, you got till Friday. You got till Friday to either renew your subscription. Uh, you can email me if your subscription doesn't renew till later in the year, and we'll get you in early. But if you're uh, on the fence, hopefully you'll want to subscribe. Jump on in now, and as long as you're in by Friday with a uh, $70 subscription, you're entered to win this Bud Light chair. Johnny, we've had uh, nine. Let me check the number here real quick. Uh, we've had 251 renewals, so 200. 151 people have already renewed their subscription for another year, and we've had uh, 18 new subscriptions since we announced it with you. So uh, we have 18 uh, new new subscribers, which is awesome, and we'll keep the tally going. My goal was 50 new subscribers by the end of the contest, so we'll see if we can get there. Um, but uh, again, if, if you want in, uh, great. You know, we on the BNN After Dark show, we gave away uh, Mountain West Championship game tickets to subscribers. So we were doing a lot of cool stuff here, and uh, appreciate uh, – you know, Johnny and, and KTIK and Prater and uh, Tust and Winston and uh, everybody. So it's been fun. We'll keep it rolling. But hopefully you will uh, jump in and subscribe if you haven't. It was good, wasn't it, seeing Winston down there for the pregame show on uh, Saturday? Yeah, he's a good dude and does a great job on Bronco Nation News. And he just develop, you know, just provides such insight and experience and enthusiasm. And, you know, he's funny. He's just a good fit for the local media. I know he doesn't want to be referred to as a media member. It's like yeah, he was all proud to have his press pass. I'm all, sure <laughs> all the ex players and all the ex coaches who do stuff with local media, they all want to always say, Hey, I'm not, I'm not really a media member. It's so funny how they all say that, but uh, no, nah, you are man. If you're getting paid for this stuff, you're in the media. Welcome Winston. But yeah, that was cool. Uh, just didn't turn out the way obviously Boise state or this fan base wanted to BJ. It was one of those very, I thought it was a very even matchup and it was just one or two big things. were going to sway the weight. We're going to sway the scale. And I yep. thought that that happened in the form of a penalty that gave Fresno just a little more to work with there. And Boise state had too much to make up for at that point, I think, but obviously a lot to talk about that. Yeah, we got some comments as well, and I want to bring up something Winston said on the pregame show. But first, we want to tell you about a couple of our great sponsors. We're in the uh, Cutwater Can Cocktails. Johnny's down there in the RowPaint.com studios downtown. I'm here in the uh, Cutwater Can Cocktail studios. More than 30 flavors of pre-mixed, pre-made premium cocktails. Check them out at your local gas station or grocery store. If you're looking for a dentist, BoiseDentistryCo.com. Check them out. Locations across the Treasure Valley, uh, Mountain Home, Caldwell, everywhere in between. Full family dentistry. If you're looking for a dentist, use the uh, Reigns Family Dentist. You will not be disappointed. Dr. Miner and his staff at BoiseDentistryCo.com. If you're looking for business insurance, check out United Commercial Insurance. UnitedCommercialInsurance.com. They can write business policies and insurance in 44 states around the country. So pretty much anywhere. They're trying to help more folks here in the Treasure Valley, beefing up their staff there. So if you're in the Treasure Valley and looking for uh, to lower your rate on your business insurance, a quick call could save you hundreds of dollars. Tell them you heard about it, Bronco Nation News, and they'll hook you up, 229-8222. And, of course, Ridley's Family Market, shopridleys.com. 
13 locations across the state of Idaho. Love that CUNA location. They got the at-home uh, shopping. They got the Skip app you can use on your phone and kind of avoid the line when you're going through the store shopping. Uh, all the highest technology. You can find a location near you at shopridleys.com. Okay, we got some comments coming in here, Johnny. But one of the things that Winston Venable said, I don't remember if this was the part where you were on or not, but we talked about keys to this game. And the two things that we talked about were winning the turnover battle and special teams. And both of those things in a championship game, in a big game, it's winning the turnover battle and it's special teams. And both of those, Boise State badly lost in that game. You had the punt return touchdown. You had um, the penalty, which we can even hear from Jalen Clark if we want to about that play because I talked to him after the game thanks to the Mountain West rule allowing every player to, to talk that played in the game. Um, and he was great talking about it. Um, and then on on uh, you know turnover, you lost the turnover battle 2 nothing. Two interceptions from Taylor Green. So uh, special teams turnovers really cost Boise State a championship yep like I said one of those things it was an even matchup and a couple of miscues here and there from one team is going to tip the scale in favor of the other I think Boise State finds a way to win that game if not for the special teams miscues and I throw in the Jalen Clark roughing the the kicker penalty as a special teams miscue even though that was a scrimmage down I, I, I that's a special teams play if you ask me the return game was on point for Fresno. You got the Fresno credit again in a tight matchup. They were the team that was able to not only make more plays, but capitalize off miscues. Taylor Green didn't play well, and that's fine. That's okay. There's going to be those games for whatever reason. Fresno did a really good job, I think, of caging him up. Um, he wasn't on point. You saw several throws go over the receiver's head. It was a little high there. Not sure what the deal was, if it was weather or whatever, man. He just wasn't on that game. Um, he was uh, checking down a lot more than he does. Typically, he'll drive the ball down the field. I mean, the stats will support that with Taylor on the season. His yards per attempt is almost eight yards. Um, uh, on Saturday, his yards per attempt was 4.6. That's that, that's cut in half, and uh, Hayner was 6.8. So um, that had a lot to do with it. We don't know what happened, or maybe you do, BJ, with the injuries. George Helani did not have a carry in the fourth quarter. Neither did Ashton Genty. Collectively, they had five carries in the second half. Um, I wanted to see more of that, but if they weren't out there, were they injured, whatnot, and uh, Eric McAllister didn't make a catch. He had a couple of targets, no. wasn't able to bring the ball down. It just wasn't one of those recipes that Boise State wants to put out there and hope they can have a winning performance or just too many mistakes or, or failed opportunities there. And now you're in Frisco, and it is what it is in Fresno State. I mean, is there an argu argument to be made that they've been the flagship program of this conference the last five, six years? Maybe there is now, but uh, the Bulldogs – win that game and as you can see on that that's what is bugging a lot of people that should have been a running into the kicker rather than a roughing the kicker and uh yeah i would support that claim but i'm not an official man but yeah that's brutal and certainly we're not going to say this is what cost them the game but this is a 14 to 9 game at this point yep boise state set to get the ball back i know it's been uh, a rough uh, go but you're down five you're about to get the ball and all it takes is one good drive and you have the lead Coaches were wanting to be aggressive in this situation. Obviously, uh, he misses the block, and then as he's coming down, the back of the uh, kicking leg makes contact uh, with him. I, um, you know, Kent Riddle didn't have a huge problem with the call, Johnny, but he did say on the post game show he would have been fine. You know, if I'm the other team and they call that running, I'm probably fine with that. I mean, it's fourth and fifteen. It's right. kind of a kind of a bailout. Um, I mentioned the Mountain West rule. We don't get to do this very often. So let's hear briefly about 45 seconds from Jalen Clark, who was the player there that uh, committed the penalty and appreciate him for being a stand-up guy and, uh, you know, talking after the game. But uh, me and Jordan Kay had a chance to catch up with him after the game. And here's uh, him on that play. On the call, but um, what did you see from your perspective as you, you know, were trying to get the block? Um, I'll just say, I mean, our coach would teach me to go faster, your leverage, and I believe, I mean, I was just trying to get there and make a play for my team. Yeah. And you, man, you live with the ref's call, you can't change nothing about it. So. Yeah. You think it should have been running? I mean, you, that's a 15 yard penalty. <laughs> that's, that, and they scored, I mean, that changed the game. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I mean, it definitely affected the game in ways, but there's ways I could have fixed my technique to maybe um, not ha have that happen. But again, res uh, respond with our defense, keep it going. So were you going for, I mean, as you're going for the block, but what was like the point? Were you guys trying to be aggressive there? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. They're trying to be aggressive, Johnny, and uh, they want the block. Avalos said as much. I mean, he obviously, they, 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 they were they were being aggressive. The offense hadn't done much. They yeah. saw something, I think, earlier this season, maybe even the week before against uh, Wyoming, where they either had a punt blocked or, or almost had one blocked. They thought they could get there. 
And uh, I just personally, in that situation, you're down five. You're it's fourth and fifteen. You're about to get the ball back. Just that's one. That's a spot back. where that's a spot where I play it safe. Especially it was still the third quarter. I mean, if there would have been maybe five minutes left in the game, you're saying, okay, maybe we need to press the issue a little more. Let's go after the block on this. But no, for for if it was me, and and they're lucky, it's not. But you know, I'm calling some type of a punt return scheme that's more set up to on the return rather than maybe trying to block. Um, but you live and learn. And yeah, when it's fourth and 15 defensively, I just don't want to do anything stupid. No five yard penalty that turns into like an automatic first, or in that case, a personal foul. I mean, think about this. Not only did Fresno retain possession, BJ, they got a 15 yard advancement on that. I mean, that hurt twice as much. If I'm Boise State there, just take the ball and see if you can score. You got dirt cutter scheming. You, yep. I felt Talon at one point was going to have something pop. He's just that athletic. You can only contain him or cage him that long. He's going to get out at some time and make a play. And, um, yeah, that was a backbreaker. And Fresno, as you know, the quarter ended, and then they still retained the ball. They ended up scoring a touchdown on yeah, that position to go up 21-9 to nine in the fourth. And then your boys, he's saying, uh-oh, what are we yep. going to do now? It just – to me, that was the that was the play. It might have been a different game had that play not happened. Now, Boise State still would have had to do something on offense, and they hadn't yet really up to that point. I think Boise State got to the red zone twice in that entire game. So it probably would have been Fresno winning the game anyway, but yep. you would have liked to see. Yep, and uh, that was an 87-yard drive they finished off after oh. the uh, that kept it going with the penalty. 87-yard drive uh, took like six minutes off the clock. They score, and then uh, that was all she wrote. I think the punt return was big too. Oh, yeah. always, you know, Boise State had only given up like 90 yards of offense to Fresno, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you look up and you're losing seven to three, and that was a huge momentum switch for them. I mean, Johnny Spencer Danielson, this defense, all these guys that were banged up and got out there for you know. Uh, you gave up 245 yards to Jake Hayner in Fresno State. 245 yards. If I'd have told you that, you know, last week, you'd have said, "Oh, Boise State wins going away." I mean, 245 yards should have total. been more, should have been more than enough total yards for the defense, limiting them to for this offense to do something, and they just couldn't. They had to settle for field goals. Uh, you know, somebody was asking here. Uh, and it's a very valid question. We talked about it in the press box all game. Why did we get away from the run game and we were averaging five yards a carry? Um, Andy Avalos said after the game, and he was asked about it, and his response was, we saw the numbers in the box we liked. They basically, basically, Fresno State was, after giving up 316 yards last year, Fresno State was putting more guys in the box. They were trying to stop the run, and they thought there were – now, you could say that wasn't working, so they should have still they kept running – but yeah. they were they were putting more guys in the box. There were some there were some opportunities on the outside that Boise State liked, and Andy Avalos said they just didn't execute them. They just didn't complete the passes. Taylor Green's it throws were just behind guys and off. I mean, but they liked what they got. They just couldn't execute. Uh, I I would have countered with that or argued with that, and as most people would, uh, I think he rushed for five point eight yards a carry or something in the first half um, every time. But the, the problem was on first down when they would pass on first down it'd be incomplete and it'd be second and 10. And then all of a sudden you're having to pass or they'd run on second down and then it'd be third and third six, and third and yeah. six, third and seven. Then they'd have to pass. Um, I, I just, uh, it was a very odd game plan because they had run the ball so well last time they uh, had played them. And I think all fans or even my dad who like doesn't even text me that much in all caps texted me, run the ball. And uh, I, I think that uh, a lot of people thought that way. And for whatever reason, they, they liked the, um, you know, matchup in the passing game. And it just didn't work. Calling that was dad out. Nice. That was Taylor. Um, was that Taylor Green? I mean, it, I think he finished what? Uh, 30 14, yards. He was, uh, no, in terms of his passing, I don't oh, have the numbers 17, right in front of me. 17 for 38. Yeah. Thir under 50% completion. Mm -hmm. He got, you know, that the numbers looked a little better too. I think it was 175 yards, but it was the 52 yarder to uh, Davis. Davis Cutter that made it look a little better. But I mean, it just, it just something was off with Taylor, man. It just was yep. not a Taylor Green passing game that we had seen the last two months. Yep. And that's okay. Those are going to happen. Um, you know, he's a freshman. You know, right? Uh, I mean, so I mean, it's part of the growing pains. It's fine, dude. You get a new puppy, uh, they're not going to be potty trained immediately. Like puppies wet the carpet, right? I mean, young yeah. freshmen, uh, student athletes, uh, it's not a complete project yet. 
is a freshman. Taylor Green's going to be a terrific player. He already is a terrific player. And credit Fresno. They did a good job on him. Well done. I haven't seen a team do as good a job defending Taylor as Fresno did. I felt that, again, he was going to pop a run. He didn't. Um, one thing that I did notice is it seems like every time he runs, it's like a design scheme run play. And that's cool, too. But there's also an implement um, to running quarterbacks, or I'm sorry, an element to running quarterbacks when you're back in the pocket and you see a crease open and you just go. The defense is guarding the pass. You know, they're hoping you don't run like like an old like Russell Wilson back breaking third and seven. He takes off on foot picks up 25 yards up the middle of the field, sliding. Like, Talon's going to have that element, probably will be even more dangerous than that. But I didn't feel like Talon, and this is actually a good thing for quarterbacks, you don't want them at the first sign of, uh, of pasture to take off and run. You want them to go through their progression. But Talon, it felt to me, BJ, didn't have any of those, like, impromptu runs. And sometimes yep. those are the hardest to defend. And – uh I love watching the kid play and I can't wait to see him keep playing, but there's going to be certain elements that are going to, that are going to grow within his game. And it's just going to make him all that much more exciting. We only got four minutes left and I do want to switch to basketball real quick, Johnny, but uh, Vlad does say, love our defense. How many of the defensive players re are returning? Well, I think if you go by not returning, I mean, you're going to lose jail Skinner, you lose Tyreek Jones, you lose Caleb Biggers, you lose Zeke Noah, you lose Scott Matlock. I mean, George Tarless. I mean, they're, they're, this defense is going to look a lot different. And who knows? Shram about has a COVID year. Don't right? know if he's going to use it, but he does. Yeah, don't know um, if he's going to use you'll it. You'll have uh, LaBeouf and Kaniho back. You have Robinson. You have Olin Depot back. Uh, you have Herbert Gums back. Washington back. Um, but uh, yeah, you lose a lot. I mean, you lose over half your starters on defense. So. That's something certainly to watch. And uh, Double O'Neal, as we switched to basketball, did say, uh, boys, he'll have to start over with a new offensive coordinator. We'll have a losing season next year. He's predicting an 0-4 start to the year next year. Well, with it's Taylor a brutal non-conference schedule. It really is. They I think start at Washington. They I start at, at Washington in the first game. They is there a North they, Dakota in there? There is, but they play home to UCF in week two. Uh, and then uh, they're at Memphis as well, so it is a tough non-con next oh, yeah. year. But uh, looking forward to seeing what the uh, offensive, co the new offensive coordinator comes in uh, and uh, is able to do here moving forward. Hey, check out the Blue and Orange Store dot com. The Blue and Orange Store free shipping any order over forty dollars. Make sure you check them out. The Blue and Orange Store dot com. Ropaint dot com. Our title sponsor. Check them out. The official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics. Lift the afford of Boise. Check them out if you're looking for a new vehicle. The Reigns family couldn't be happier with our vehicle. We're also happy with Idaho Central Credit Union. ICCU dot the official bank of Bronco Nation News. Make the switch today, iccu.com. And if you're looking for a new job, jump into the trucking industry, transcomservice.com. They can help you get out there uh, driving that uh, new truck uh, that you're uh, towing that load in no time. So check them out at uh, tcstranscomservice.com. Okay, we got two and a half minutes left, Johnny. Uh, big win for the basketball team over Texas A&M. 25 career points for Max Rice. Um, the Broncos are, are rolling right now, man. They got EOU tomorrow, which should be an easy win. And then kind of the final really, really tough non-con game of this schedule at St. Louis, who's a, you know, top 50 Ken Palm team, borderline top 25 team right now on Saturday. But, uh, Hey man, to already have Washington state, Colorado, Texas A&M in the bag. That was a big win on Saturday. I thought that was the best win they've had this season. Yeah, and, you know, St. Louis might be a better opponent than Texas A&M. No, they're, they're definitely better. But, definitely. but they're not – Boise State plays like their tough games aren't big names. They're good teams, but they're not big names. Texas A&M was a big name. Maybe not a great team, but a big name. And this fan base, too, would almost rather beat, in my taking, the big name than the good team. Uh, they need, like, B.J. Rames to tell them, hey, this is a good team. They're Ken Palm and this, and they have this and this and this. Like sometimes fans like, dude, I want to play a team that I, I, I I've heard of, I know. And, and Texas A and M was that. And BJ Boise State, I mean, they had their foot on A and M's throat, and they didn't let that sucker off. They were flat out the better team. You see Buzz Williams' facial expressions on that game. I went home and watched it. You know, yep. the coach of AM, he's frustrated. Like he, I mean, he's got a big 12, I'm sorry, big an SEC caliber team. They're an SEC team that they have they have high expectations, like most teams. They put a lot of money 
into their basketball budget. And Leon Rice just had a better team, schemed better, made bigger shots, played better defense. I mean, you watch that game and you take the the, the A and M and the Boise State off the jersey, you'd have thought that Boise State. Yep. was an SEC basketball program and yeah. not Texas A&M. That was a really impressive win, and I get it. A&M might not be good this year, but that's an SEC team with an SEC budget and TV contract. To me, those big-name opponents, I think yep. that's going to be a big deal, hopefully for Boise State fan. A&M can have a pretty good year, BJ. I know we're pressed on time. A&M can have a pretty good year, and then that ranking, that win will continue to look better, but really impressed with the win. Yeah, 57 is what the, the net came out today for the first time, Johnny. The, the net, the official ranking that they use, Boise State checks in at number 57, which is a pretty solid spot to start the season. Uh, in the Ken Palm, by the way, Boise State is also 57. St. Louis is number 41. Okay, so, uh, where's, you are where's, playing slew, a, where's slew in uh, in the net? Right above them, 56. Okay. Yep. So uh, they're one spot above them in the net, so that's a quality game. Could be a de- uh, top 50 is, de- is a quad one, so that has a chance to be a quad one game. But uh, five in a row, Broncos are rolling. We'll get you ready for uh, tomorrow's game with the pregame show. Johnny might make an appearance there courtside about 6.30 or so. EOU, I think, is the opponent at 7 o'clock tomorrow. So, Johnny, we'll be listening 3 to 6 today to you and Prater. You have all the coverage of the bowl game, uh, breaking down the matchup and uh, the loss and the title game we appreciate you as always man Uh, have a great day thanks bj there he is john mallory listen to him and prater today go sign up for the contest bronconationnews.com have a great day we'll talk to you later bronconationnews bronconationnews.com